Well, good evening and welcome to the Brothers in Law. And on this channel, we discuss police involved incidents that occur around the country and we give our analysis on the actions of those police officers to see if their actions are what a reasonable officer would do. We also look at the actions of the citizens to see if they have followed our acronym of CALM, which stands for comply, answer the questions, listen, and move on. Would this situation have turned out differently? Now, you may agree or disagree with us, but by the end of this video, we hope that you get a better understanding of how these incidents unfold. So if you're new to our channel, I was a Virginia State Police Officer for seven years, and I'm a retired Navy Chief Petty Officer. Mike. And I'm, I'm Mike Bradley. I'm the co-host of this show. I'm a retired police officer for 26 years in Northern California, also a six-year uh, veteran, Army, Army veteran. Uh, we got a good one lined up for you to, today. Uh, Corey, let me ask you, if you had a 12-year-old, what would that 12-year-old be doing right now? <laughs> right? Regular 12-year-old uh, stuff. Yeah. Yep, twelve year old stuff. Uh, probably uh, playing video games right about now. Just coming in from outside. Yeah. Now you know. I understand some people will say, "Well, it depends on what kind of environment your twelve year old is growing up in." This, that, and the other. Uh, but yeah, that's probably what my twelve year old be doing right now too, playing video games or something, uh, shooting the, the junk with his friends. But. Today, we got an uh, incident that we're going to show, we, we're going to talk about of a 12 year old that ended up getting shot and killed. Um, and, mm. and, and we got a lot to unpack here, a lot to unfold with this case. Uh, this happened uh, in Denver, Colorado, I think it was. Yep. Yep. And how long ago was this? Was this last year? Or uh, no, this earlier, year. earlier, earlier this year, back in earlier February. This year. So this kid was 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 out stealing cars, and he ended up stealing the wrong car. Was 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 driving the wrong stolen car, and ended up losing his life. So we we gonna talk about that. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so. But before we get into the show, as always, please go ahead hit that like, share, and subscribe button for us. Uh, share this video out, invite a friend and family to check out our videos. Uh, good talking points here. We hope you all get something out of it. Uh, now, this is this is broadcasting at our normal time on Thursday, 8. But however, this is pre-recorded uh, for uh, previous other engagements that uh, uh, Mike had. And so we're recording this one tonight. But you can still leave a comment below. Comment on this video, whether you like it, dislike it. Uh, just hit that like button. That's what we care about. Hit that share button. Uh, but without further ado, we'll go ahead and get into this. Oh, I, no, we're not. I back up. Uh, <laughs> hit that. Uh, go on over to our merch shop. Check out our merchandise and get yourself a Brother in the Law t-shirt to help support our channel. Uh, all proceeds go to uh, uh, helping us get on uh, other platforms and spreading our message of staying calm, which stands for comply, answer questions, and move on. That's right. So now, without further ado, we'll get into this video. Uh, even though this is pre recorded please go ahead and drop us a comment what you think about this, uh, this 12-year-old boy. And like Mike said, you know, let us know what your 12-year-old will be doing right about now uh, at this, this, uh, this evening or afternoon whatever time of day you're watching this video what, what what's your 12 year old doing right now go ahead and leave that comment down below for us so we'll go ahead and get into this it's a relatively short video uh we won't show the whole thing we'll just show up to the point um when the uh, incident takes place and then uh uh we'll give our uh, analysis on it what went right and what went wrong now, right. let, me, let me let me set it up a little just a little bit here. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. So this is an incident where it was is involving a stolen vehicle. So this victim who owns the vehicle uh had called police because, like so many people do nowadays, they have the location of their vehicle pinged on some system on their phone where they can look at their phone and say, Hey, my vehicle's here, or my vehicle's there at that moment. So he calls the police uh, and he says, hey, my vehicle was stolen and I, I, I'm tracking my vehicle as we speak. And he's showing the officer his phone. The officer sees his phone, starts, sees that, okay, it's tracking in this location at that particular time. All right. Now, 
as many of us can be sometimes, you know, if you, you have your vehicle stolen, you get very anxious and kind of excited about when I see my vehicle on the phone and it's showing in one place. Mm -hmm. you, want, you want someone to immediately rush over there and get my stolen vehicle you know what i'm saying but it doesn't necessarily happen that way when you call the police right Corey? that's right you know yeah now go, go ahead mike no i was gonna say when you call the police we'll come and first of all we want to make sure we get your vehicle in the stolen vehicle system you got to report it we got to enter it into the system as stolen so that way, everybody across the state will know that that vehicle is reported stolen, okay? But even if you have it on your phone, and we know that you're saying it's, say it's in the next city over, or, or, or which I think was in this case, was the next city over. Uh, the, the fastest we'll be able to handle that is we'll try to call the outside agency or the agency in that particular city where you have your car, and see if they can locate the car at that particular location where you say it was. And then once they locate it, they'll either take over that investigation or we'll then be able to send a detective or someone over to that location to handle that car. Okay. Most of the time that car is unoccupied and parked on the street. Uh, it's been my experience of that anyway. And you recover the car, you get your car back. That, that if it works that simple, but it don't always work that fast, right, Corey? <laughs> no, it doesn't work that fast. And 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 as a citizen, you just have to uh, uh, understand that it's not going to happen as fast as you, as you want it to, because a lot of things have to uh, uh, transpire in order for you know the, the the officer to 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 respond to this this type of a call. Um, one thing I, I, I want to mention is that, you know, like you just said, Mike, and I'll just add to that is, um, you know, if the vehicle's in another jurisdiction, um, that current city officer can't just, you know, go really go on over there uh, unannounced, yes. if you will, uh, and, and for lack of a better word, uh, and, and try to do an investigation in the city that he has no jurisdiction. Now it's up to the, you know, Hey, and now we and here what we the way we would look at it as okay, hey, well, where did it transpire at? Okay, it started here, then it's gonna end up here. So wherever it started at, that's the city that's gonna handle it. It might have ended in a crash or whatever in another city. That's where because as a state police officer, that's how we handle it. Even, even though as a state police officer, you know, uh I had to go back to where the origin started. So, you know, or if this stolen vehicle, so for example, I was in a pursuit of a stolen vehicle uh, one time that was happening, you know, that was pinging. It took, remind me to tell this story uh, at the end. Uh, so stick around for it. It's a pretty cool story. Um, it was pinging in one city, started uh, in, in another city. And actually, we got through, a, uh, went through a pursuit in three different cities. Uh, so technically, I charged him or could have charged them in, in all three of those cities, but it didn't. Uh, so for state, it works a little different than versatile city. I don't need no, I don't need to tell nobody I'm coming in there. I, I just do it because I, I was state trooper. That's how it worked for us. Uh, so, you know, keep that in mind as, as citizens, you know, jurisdictions play a role, then you got to get it out on broadcast to other units and availability. So if it happens, you know, at midnight, you know, a lot of police departments are hurting for personnel. So, you know, they're not going to be able to respond as fast as you think they should respond. Because if you have normal shift, you have, you know, four or five officers working a midnight shift. Well, all four of them could be tied up on certain calls for service. Right. Or right. assisting another officer on a call of service. It, it's not going to happen just that fast. Uh, and the thing about the pinging and stuff, like you said, I think you said, Mike. By the time you usually get there, they're not there. Uh, and, you know, you're, you're spending now time trying to drive around and talk to the citizen. Hey, where is it at now? And you got to go ride around over there to where, it is. you know, you're spending a lot of time trying to find out and actively where this is pinging from versus, you know, uh, sadly, it always ends up, you know, we 
find them after it, they've abandoned the car, stripped it or whatever they did to it. And then that's typically where we end up really finding it. Because we were talking before we started to show how often, Mike, we, we get these uh, calls, BOLs. Yeah, uh, be on the lookout for these these stolen vehicles, and it happens all the time. You can't just just oh, I'm gonna go take off and go try to find this car. You know, I because nine times time, nine times out of ten, by the time you get there, it's already gone. <laughs> all right? Yeah, that, uh, perfectly. You're right. That's kind of and keep in mind, folks. We're not we're not talking about a kidnapping here or something like that. We're strictly talking about a property crime where somebody's car was stolen. Okay. Uh, right. if, if someone was being kidnapped or some, something like that, well, that might change. That'll change the, the uh, response or change the type of uh, uh, urgency, if you will, uh, of that call. So, but this, in this case, we're just talking about a stolen car, okay? Right. And, and, and what normally happens if you call us and you say, I have my vehicle is pinging at this location at this particular time. And it may not, we may not be able to get to it, may be able to get to it. It just, just depends on a lot that's going on. But in this case, Corey, this citizen, uh, he decided to take matters into his own hands and try to go after his car himself. Okay. Now, folks, um, it's hard for me to sit here and sit here and tell you not to do that. Okay. But it, uh, as an officer, I would be thinking more of the lines of safety above all, you know, just like any crime that was in progress or something like that. I would always discourage citizens from getting physically involved that way. You know what I'm saying? I know some people have it might be a sentimental car like you saying, Corey, or something like that. They may they get excited, get anxious. Like, I see it right here. I got to go get it. You know, you got to sometimes. Pump your brakes, call your insurance companies, report that to them as stolen, and, and handle it that way, okay? Um, when you make the decision to go and get involved and get your car back yourself, when it possibly could be occupied by criminals, it could be occupied by somebody that's, that's uh, uh, armed with a firearm, somebody who could actually shoot you, or shoot back at you, okay, when you try to get their car back, you got to look to see, is it worth all of that? And in this case, this guy went and tried to get his car back on his own, and he was armed with a handgun, and he found his car, and you'll see how this unfolds. Yeah. So we're going to go ahead and jump into this, because, I, you know, there's a lot of good talking points in here. I'm jotting down a few more things I'm thinking of uh, uh, as we're talking about this. So we'll go ahead and jump into this again. Uh, leave us a comment below what you think about this this video, what happens. And, and again, the question for tonight is, where is your 12-year-old? What is he or she doing at this time? Right? And keep in mind, you know, the, this uh, this isn't graphic, but, you know, this is a young young. 12 year old boy that, that that lost his life uh if there is a commercial that pops up in here i'm sorry y'all i'll try to edit it out before i post this on uh, <laughs> live for thursday uh so without further ado here we go on february 5th a man who denver police still have not identified reported his car stolen from the northfield mall police say the man used an app to track his car to the area of 12th and Decatur, the Sun Valley neighborhood in Denver. <clears throat> Denver police told us this week, 911 dispatch told the man not to pursue the car, which they say is standard guidance from a dispatcher. It's tough to see here, but surveillance video in the area caught the moment the man pulls up to his stolen car and parks. There's no audio on the video, but it appears someone hops into the driver's seat of the stolen car as the man comes running out, followed by what looks to be smoke from gunfire. The car drives away. Now, I'm going to rewind that back just a little bit here, a couple seconds. Okay. Uh, and, and and pay attention to the guy running out. Now, this is the, the alleged owner of the vehicle. The car that's parked is, is, is his car. From gunfire, the car drives away. Oops, no, I'm not sorry about that. The smoke over seat of the stolen works. There's no surveillance video in the air, which they say is standard guidance from a dispatcher. 
It's tough to see so here. This is where he finds the car. Caught the moment right. the man pulls up to his stolen car and parks. There's no audio on the video, but it appears someone hops into the driver's seat of the stolen car as the man comes running out. Now, and if you can see him running out, the yep. vehicle. Uh, car. The guy with the, the white shirt on is, is the owner of this vehicle. Of this vehicle. You see the car door shut, and that's... Uh, assuming that that's the the, the twelve year old boy, uh, I'm gonna play it again and and see if you can tell where that gun smoke is coming out. Followed by what looks to be smoke. I, it's, it it happens so fast that you can barely see me run rewind one more. Followed moment. by what looks to be. Uh, it's really hard to see the muzzle flash in there, but uh, it's especially hard with the brake light on. With there. the brake light is on, but. Uh, I'm going to put the link to the video in, in down in the description, and you check it out. It almost looks like, Mike, when I looked at it this time here, that you see muzzle flash almost simultaneously. And so now the problem is, the reason why this gentleman hadn't gotten charged with uh, the murder of this 12-year-old is because you can't tell who shot first. And one inter interesting thing you can't see is the muzzle flash, and I'm wondering if that's because of the brake light. Is the reason why you probably can't see the muzzle flash. I'm one. It very well could be. So this kid ends up dying. He was shot, yeah. and he ends up dying. Uh, I think the vehicle went down the road a little bit before it just pulled over into a ditch or something like that. And the yeah. other occupants of the vehicle, there were several occupants of this vehicle, apparently, mm -hmm. allegedly. And the other occupants of the vehicle fled the scene so right. they haven't been found yet no but unfortunately the 12 year old kid is is the one who ended up dying who right. was driving the car and you don't know how many people were shooting either no you don't uh, could have been you know the, the the passenger and maybe the couple uh backseat passengers firing too and then what if their their shots were the one to hit the 12 year old boy with the guy when he shot you know missed and didn't hit anything yeah uh, I, I don't know because I, according to the articles that i've read no there was nothing no talk about finding any any cases uh so you know we don't know maybe they use revolver everybody involved use revolvers we don't know it's speculation know. uh but you can see how you know i get it you have the right to 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 protect your own personal property uh but to take it to your own hands this extreme i, I think is a, is a bit much i'm not gonna say and tell you not to i highly suggest that you don't but it, at the end of the day it's your decision uh yeah you, and you just have to be prepared <laughs> for the consequences that are going to come with that if you find yourself uh in a shootout uh right. are you justified in doing this was your Do life you have to want to justify yourself in doing right that? Do you want to be involved in a, a legal proceeding where you ended up shooting and killing someone mm -hmm. okay um that alone is going to be i mean discussions Corey, is that you're seeing on the media is this guy should have known this was a 12 year old how could he shoot and kill a 12 year old over a stolen vehicle you know, though that's the statements that you see. So what what are, what are their indications to say that he should have known he was a twelve year old boy? I, a twelve, a 12 year old boy is not drive should not be able to, to 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 drive a car. Heck, I don't even think I was tall enough at twelve to 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 touch the gas pedal at twelve. And you see in all kind of photos of this kid uh, on social media that are the you know the photos of him looking like a 12 year old you know what i'm saying but we don't know what he looked like at this night at this particular moment first of all second right. of all you're right Corey. i wouldn't assume that someone who is driving my stolen vehicle is 12 years old you know what i'm saying i wouldn't assume that i would assume that's that that's not what a old. reasonable 12 year old would be doing uh the, the right i would reason is it reasonable to assume that there's a 12-year-old kid who would be driving this stolen vehicle 
and running and trying to get away. Right. No, you're not. No, I wouldn't be normally no. thinking. I wouldn't even be thinking about the age like that at all. Yeah, I mean, you would have to actually really be obviously seven years old. Okay, for right. me, but, but you you could that. you could still assume that it, it would probably be someone in the age between fourteen and 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 eighteen. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You, you, you could you could assume that, but not a twelve year old. I mean, yeah. Again, you know, how, how do we know how you know? Like you said, what he could have been, you know, five foot eight already at twelve, or six foot one. I mean, we we don't know. Or or he could have been a short adult. We don't we don't. I mean, if if I try to put myself in those shoes, if I was this uh, vehicle owner, and I see this person at nighttime from a distance. I'm focusing on my car, first of all, okay? And then I see someone jump into the driver's side, driver's seat of my vehicle and try to drive away. Now, this this vehicle owner obviously is uh, claiming self-defense kind of like deal. He say, he's saying that, if I'm not mistaken, he's saying that they someone from inside the car shot at him first and he returned fire. Mm-hmm. Now, that, that that so that's why he didn't get charged because they can't prove otherwise. You know what I'm saying? You right. can't assume that he went up to this car and he just decided to shoot, start shooting the occupants who were not shooting back at him. You know what I'm right. saying? That's obviously that there were at least two gunshots. Right, at uh, least. You know what I'm saying? So, you know. That's one of those things where, as a citizen, you got to make up your mind. Do you really want to get involved like that? No, do you really want to? Uh, the and question is, no, I, I don't, I'm not sure in today's climate if that's something I wanted to, to get myself into. Um, you know, you have to make that decision. I'm not gonna, like I said, I'm not gonna sit up here and tell you to do it or not to do it, but you just better be able to, to articulate your reason of doing this why you you shot now yeah uh you know they'll probably never find those other two two boys out no i, I shouldn't sit there they probably will but you know how it is mike you, you think they're gonna they gonna don't don't say what happened because they probably they they, they, they all they, look they, in this they, video they, too they yeah. felons or or juveniles and oh what you doing in possession with a firearm right so they're yeah. not gonna talk so no. so this this guy's story I mean, he, he's he's nothing's gonna happen because you know the when the, the the other parties involved aren't gonna say anything, and that's the sad part. You know, this kid loses his life. You as a parent is gonna you know you want answers. Yeah, you and, want you know, answers. You don't wonder why you know well why aren't the police charging this man? Well, mm-hmm. right now he's saying self defense. That's where we had to go. The, the 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 young boy is dead and gone. He can't testify. So it's up to these other individuals who are in the car to come forward and tell their side story to see what happens. If they can say, hey, yeah, he did shoot at us first and we, you know, we were just protecting ourselves. Well, you know, then he could probably be brought up on some charges if, if the, the stories are, are jiving. But as long as they stay ghosts, this guy's nothing's going to happen. And, and, you know, the family, yeah, they, they want justice. What you know, you need to turn that heat on these boys that was in the car with him, and 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 tell them to, to, to screw your street cred foolishness and stitch, snitches get stitches, and 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 say something, uh, because you want justice for your son. Yeah, uh, I mean, you know, with him losing his life as a parent, do you think they knew know who these two who these other people are in that car? Do they would they have known that their twelve year old? Was with these other people in that car. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, they didn't know he was rolling around driving a stolen vehicle. You know what I'm saying? I mean, at 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 this time of of night, and 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 that's my next question: uh, Where are his parents? Uh, Who 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 has guardianship over him? Is he living with aunties? Is he living with cousins? Is he living with mom? Uh, by her, but just mom a single family home, or is he living with mom and dad? Or where are the parents? This it, to me, it seems as though this kid played too many uh, uh, Grand Theft Auto video games and thought that he could, you know, 
carry that over into real life and, and, and get out here and joy ride around as if, you know, this is the cool thing to do. Not knowing the consequences of this, you could lose your life. I mean, and then they argue about the, the, the other issue, like we said before, is, is this victim who owns the car. Uh, if he had known, let's assume that if he had known that this was a 12 year old, do you think his actions would have been the same? Uh, we'll never know that because, you know, it is what it is. He took action on some property that belonged to him uh, that he, you know, unfortunately, he took some action and somebody was was shot and killed. And unfortunately, it was a 12-year-old that was shot and killed. Did the 12-year-old deserve to lose his life after stealing a car? No, but you can't look at it like that. You got to look at it how he would have thought all he's thinking of, that's my car. It's stolen. I don't want these people to get away, okay? And, yeah, I got my gun just in case they are armed, okay? And I'm going to get my car back. That was his whole thinking. You know what I'm saying? Now, if he knew for sure that this was a 12-year-old, I don't know. You could make the argument that, well, if you know it's somebody that young, are you really going to pull your gun out and get involved in that? Well, I, I think that that part of it might be extremely too hard to prove that he knew that that was a twelve year old boy. Yeah, I think uh, so. Without without asking, and, and and then think about it, you know, your drilling is is through the roof right now. Yes, right, and and you know he's he's got tunnel vision uh, to the extreme right now, so he's just honing in on that car. He's not really uh focusing on the looks what these guys are wearing he's so amped up right now his wide few uh field of view just condensed down to this yeah yeah and so yeah. now he's not seeing anything but what we say red he just wants to get his car back and it's it's pretty i guess obvious to assume that yeah he probably ran out with his gun because the shots rang off very quickly from both both sides um uh from the inside the vehicle and outside so that's telling me his his weapon was already out uh because i don't think he was that fast to, to roll up on them see them they shoot and then he pulls out fast enough and, and, and shoots back because if when you look closely when you slow it down you see that 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 smoke uh it's, it's relatively quick uh, now I saw the video uh, also uh, before he found his vehicle when he spoke to the police. Mm -hmm. And I, I will say that he made some statements to the police mm -hmm. that definitely would definitely sounds like he was ready to use deadly force to get his vehicle back. Uh, mm -hmm. And I remember he, he had made some statements like, look, if you guys can't get it uh, immediately, if I catch up to my vehicle, I'm not going to need you guys. It's not going to be an emergency at that point. You know, he was implying that he would already have taken care of it and we wouldn't need the police wouldn't need to be responding in such a fast way. Mm -hmm. You know, that that type of talk tell uh, it certainly sounds like in your mind. You are know that you're gonna catch this vehicle, and you may use deadly force. You know what I'm saying? Or, or he could be using it as a tactic to 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 get them to to respond faster. With him saying he's gonna do something that would prompt the, the officers to move a lot quicker, so he didn't have to do anything. Could be. Uh, could be. So I mean, just those words alone. I, I mean, yeah, I see the seriousness in it. But is, is is it cause for alarm? <laughs> I, I I don't know. I think it's one of those things you had to take take with a grain of salt. To be honest, yeah. With you. I mean, I am speculating uh, here, and yeah. our viewers, you can pull that video. It is on YouTube. I saw it. I saw it on mm -hmm. YouTube. So it is on YouTube. Uh, you can pull it up later and see what he said to the police when he was initially contacted. Mm -hmm. But. He was definitely when he was as a, when he was initially contacted. He was definitely amped up even then. Like you know, I'm gonna get my vehicle back one way or another. 
You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? It was he really came across that way. You know. Yeah. Now, does that make a difference? I mean, that's that, that, that probably finally caught up to it. That's probably you know verbiage a lot of us would say. I know I probably would say you, you better you better catch him before I do. Yeah, yeah, you I see what you're what saying. I mean? Uh, does that so? What does that mean? I, you better, you better get them before I do. What, what does that mean? Does that mean I'm going to hurt somebody? Am I going to do uh, bodily injury to them to 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 inflict you know possible death? No, nah, I mean it can be a, mean a lot of things. You just better hurry and get to them before I do because it, it could be ugly. Yeah. Uh, but you know, again, the guy's emotions are through the roof. Yeah. That's his car. He wants his property back. Police aren't acting fast enough. And, and he wants he wants he wants his property back. So I mean, I'm kind of putting my trying to put myself in his shoes, if you will. Uh, how would I handle that? Um, yeah, I, I'm 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 gonna go out and look for my vehicle. You steal my vehicle? I'm, I'm gonna go out and look if I want it back. Or you know, I'm just part of me is, is like that. Another half of me, Mike, is like, man, I'm just gonna call and share. Man, that's an opportunity to give me some. I'm give me another car. <laughs> You know, yeah, I, I mean, you can't deny if you if I saw my vehicle and I have an app and I see where it is and I know, you know, my vehicle was stolen by somebody. I see it right here at this intersection know. on my, you know, I can't I can't deny I might, I would be very tempted to pull up and and see for myself. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's why I can't really fall, even though the police said. Don't don't try to go get your vehicle, sir. Even though they mm -hmm. said that they, you know, legally they can't stop you from doing right. that. The I whole mean, point of this is because issue. he had to do a shooting. Okay. <laughs> right. Right. And and that's why they tell you not to pursue. Right. Because of situations like this. It, it, it ends up somebody getting uh hurt and killed. Uh this is why it's a standard. Uh, procedure for most uh, police dispatchers to tell people to not uh, follow vehicles, to not interact with somebody who's, you know, just been in, in some type of a hostile uh, in incidents with you. Uh, don't do it. I know our dispatchers would tell you don't follow the vehicle. Yeah, uh, yeah. When you, when you, you know, a hit and run or something like that, you know, and you want to go and, and follow the vehicle and you go and try to follow that person home somewhere no that's that's not a good thing to do uh and if you and if you do do that we just say stay far enough behind them that they don't recognize you, you following them uh you, you like you said, Mike, yeah because like you said Mike, you, you most people aren't going to listen to to what you're what the dispatch is saying uh and it's because it's not a lawful order they can't lawfully tell you not to right. follow somebody Right, um, but understand if it escalates and you're involved, and somebody gets hurt, and you, you're doing the hurting, you're gonna be held responsible. So I mean, in this case, it, you know, they they are they're all making arguments of he went up there to shoot this kid from seamless. He was ready to shoot this kid regardless, and they're dismissing the fact that well, somebody shot at him, so first. You know, well, at least that's what he says. We can't show and prove otherwise, so that's why they couldn't charge him. They're not saying that he didn't shoot first. They're just saying they can't prove that he shot first. You know what I'm saying? Right. So uh, clearly, both parties shot. We just don't know who shot first. You know what I'm saying? Um, and, you know, the guy has a right to try to go get his vehicle. Although, like we said, we strongly recommend against it, but he has a right to try to do that. And I can't say that I don't understand his temptation to to drive up and find his vehicle. And definitely once he found it, I can't fault him for trying to run up to it and possibly try to stop somebody from driving away. But if he, Corey, if he went up there and just decided to shoot this kid because he was driving away, that's a different story. I would mm. think that's wrong. But if he went up there with his gun ready and somebody shot at him, well, you can't fault the guy for returning fire and shooting back. You know what I'm saying? So that, that's what the big deal is. 
Did this 12, they're, they're focusing on the fact that he was 12 years old. Well, this is a 12 year old who was clearly knew what he was doing, stealing the vehicle, driving off of the vehicle. Clearly, he was getting to that car quickly because he knew that that was probably the owner who was chasing after him. And he mm -hmm. tried to jump into the car and try to drive away like some thug. You know, a 12 year old can kill you just the same. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, you know, the whole 12 year old stuff. Yes, yeah, unfortunate. He was 12 and he got, he lost his life over some property. Sure. Yeah, that's tragic. You know and, what I'm saying? And, you know, and, and you're out here that young trying to play big boy, you know, games. Right. You know, when they say play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Yeah. Uh, and, and the family and, feels that pain and they right. want somebody to pay for that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, this is a situation where I don't think that there's enough there to say that this owner of the vehicle maliciously went up and tried to shoot this kid just for driving away. I mean, you can't really establish that. You know what I'm saying? Well, yeah, and and then you know you you you're already out the car, and then you run and jump back in it. So now you taking off in it again. Yeah. Right now, the presence of the with the presence of the owner there. So now you have to look at it. Okay, is the use of force authorized now? Because now you he now sees you get re-enter his car again. And run off and, and and try to to steal it now. Does he have that that right to to take action now? That's a good question. I mean, in my opinion, the, the only only way I see him justified in using deadly force, such as a firearm, is if they fired up on him first, and he was self, it was self defense. That's the only way we justify. It wouldn't be justified just because the kid is driving off in his car. You know what I'm saying? If the kid is just driving off in his car and it's stolen, you're not justified in using deadly force just to stop the kid from driving off. You but are justified. He does have the right to, to protect his personal property. But absent deadly force, though. The you know absent deadly force. Oh, yeah. Just I just like think there's somebody no was advocate here what, what, what somebody would be thinking. Right, right. But uh, just like as if someone um, someone ran up and, and someone, say if someone, you walked out in your garage and you see a guy walking away with the stereo system that you that he took from your garage and he's, he's walking and running away, you can't then turn around and shoot the guy because he stole your stereo system. No, he didn't present okay. a, a threat. Right. Now, but in this situation, somebody shot at him. At least that's what mm -hmm. he's claiming. That's what it looks like, that there was definitely a shot coming from that vehicle. And, you know, you can't dispute that it probably was self-defense. At least you can't prove that it wasn't. Right, which is, I think, going to be hard to, 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 to do unless they've gotten uh, a different angle of this to where you can see the muzzle flash. Like I said, it's so hard to see the muzzle flash because of the brake lights which is something I want to see. If I can see muzzle flash, now we can see who shot first um, and, and and then be able to take, you know, appropriate action that way. But as of right now, yeah, how are you going to convict this guy? Like, yeah. I, I don't see the argument. Like I, I, I feel for the, for the parents uh, because their child is gone and, and nobody's going to be held accountable. And the streets yeah. talk, we know, so those other people who ran from the car, somebody know who they are. They just somebody ain't coming forward. Somebody I, know who they are. And, you know, because it's unfortunate. If no one turns them in, it's very unlikely that they're going to turn themselves in. No, nah, they're okay. definitely going to turn themselves in. Because I guarantee you, they weren't either. They were underage as well. Or maybe, you know, yeah. I mean, early, maybe 20, 19, 20 years old with them uh, doing this. Uh, but they're all probably convicted felons uh, or uh, shouldn't have been in possession of a firearm anyways, if not a convicted felon. Uh, so, no, I'm not going to turn myself in 
uh, to tell the story because if I was one of the ones with the gun in the car, then I'm implementing myself. <laughs> right. And exactly. So I, I ain't gonna do that. At my age with a gun, I already got you know a juvie. I'm already on papers anyway, uh, probation or whatever. Uh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna turn my own self in. So no, nah, these kids ain't gonna say nothing unless the parents parents get wind of it if they are an age themselves and and hog tie them up and and and, and drag them down to the police station. But outside of that, it's it's, it's just sad that this happened. Right. Like my, that's, that's what it was. Yeah. Prayers go out to this young man's family. Uh, I, I'd like to see them get some type of justice, but the, the, the child was in the wrong. Yeah, the child was in the wrong. Did the child deserve to lose his life? I don't think you no, can look I don't at think, it. That way. I don't no. think you can look at it that way. But he made a twelve year old deserves to lose his life just for stealing a car. You know what I'm saying? Right. But keep in mind, right. or for our viewers, that's not why he was shot. He was shot. Uh, because somebody shot at him first at the at the, the owner of the vehicle first uh, mm. uh, is what they're saying. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And they can't prove otherwise. So you got to take that at face value at right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you yeah you have to. I mean, it, it's you know, dead man can't talk as I said earlier. So you know, was he just happened to be in a line of fire? Was he directly shooting at him? Uh, you know, we don't know. Uh, that's why you need the other party to step up because, you know, if we're asking these, asking these questions, just think what the parents are, are asking themselves. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and it's, and it's, you know, it's gotta be tearing them up, not, you know, knowing what really happened, you know, who shot what, but, you know, it, it was still, the, the, the child was still wrong. <laughs> He's still yeah, wrong. Probably wrong. I he's, mean, he's still wrong. No, no. Even if this guy, you know, comes out that this guy, you know, shouldn't have shot, you know, whatever. But your child still is a thief. He's still a thief. At the end of the day, he's still a thief. He's a twelve-year-old thief, uh, stealing some miles car. You know, where he they just made him drive. We don't know. Again, we'll probably never know unless these guys get caught. Uh, but. Uh, he, he made that choice to, to get in that vehicle uh, and, and, and drive around town. And I had to look and see what time of night this was when he should have had his hind parts at home uh, in bed, getting ready for the next day at this time in February, uh, getting ready for school the next day uh, or uh, finishing up a, a game of a, a call to duty or something like that. <laughs> uh, not, not out in the streets, uh, stealing, uh, uh, Somebody else, somebody else's personal property. Um, and the other, the other side is, is you know, the citizen whose car it was. You know, now this citizen was involved in a shooting. Yeah. Uh, actually shot shot a person whom, whether he knew the person was 12 years old or not, not. really beside the point. But mm -hmm. he ended up shooting someone and killing someone. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now that he knows that it was a 12 year old, he's having to deal with that. The, it, you know, maybe right now he's thinking of himself, well, damn, I probably wouldn't have pursued my car if I knew that the driver was only 12 years old. Maybe he would have a different thought process uh, had he known for a fact how old this kid was. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I think he was purely acting off of what he thought he had a right to do. You know what I'm saying? Which is defend himself, number one, and try to get his car back, number two. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so keep in mind, I mean, for our viewers, think of me. That's these are the things you got to think about if you choose to number one carry a gun and you choose to get involved, uh physically involved in something like this, of what you'll have to deal with. This right. guy's gonna deal with the so the, with, with, with the courts. Whether or not they're going to charge him with a crime, he's got to go through that process. And even now, even though they're not charging him with a crime at this point, he still has to live with the guilt, if you will, for lack of better words, of having killed a 12 year old boy. Now that he knows that the boy is 12 years old, he's definitely got to live with that. I mean, um, if he's, you know, I Maybe he has a 12-year at home himself. Right. 
You know what I mean? Right. Uh, or even if he doesn't have a kid at all, man, just just taking it as someone else's life is 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 a very traumatic uh, thing, especially if you know you're not that type of person. That like these guys out here, you know, ripping around the street and gunning down every night, they ain't thinking about it. They could care less about your life. Uh, but this guy here, you know, if he's a everyday citizen, gets up, goes to work every day, works hard, and pays his bill, and, 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 and contributes to society, uh, yeah. uh, I'm pretty confident in saying that he, he's probably, you know, not getting a lot of sleep at night uh, because this is, you know, he constant mind. Every time he sees a 12 year old boy, you know, he's reflecting on that. So, um, and again, the parents probably don't care about his feelings right now. You know, no, they they want him crucified. You know right. what I'm saying? And right. they can't understand how come you didn't know my 12 year old innocent boy. Well, he wasn't innocent, first of all. He was he's rolling rolling stolen. You know what I'm saying? Driving, mm -hmm. trying to get away in a stolen car. Okay, right. So he wasn't right. wasn't this innocent 12 year old. He was a 12 year old making very dumb decisions, mm -hmm. making very I, adult I, dumb decisions. I wanted to lose his life. So let's try to put ourselves in, 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 I don't know if that's even right, how to, like, I, I kind of want to, if, if, if that were me and I was in that, it, it, my kids were at 12 years old, I'm, I'll be honest, Mike, I'm not sure, I'd be mad that they were shot and killed, but I would be mad the fact that, well, why would they have to have done that? Like I, I, I'd, I'd have to put blame on them because you put yourself in that situation, which caused yeah. this man to react a certain way. Had you not done that, he would never have acted this way. So, because of your decision to make to get in, to, to steal this car, caused this man to act a certain way, and, and, and you can call it irresponsible way if you want it too, because he was told not to pursue the vehicle and he chose to pursue the vehicle and he chose to take action once he found his vehicle. Right. Right. So because the action of this kid put this man in the set, almost like us as officers, right? We go on, on traffic stops uh, and, and, and uh, a, a citizen doesn't comply with what we're saying or, or doesn't keep their hands out their pockets and keep reaching, 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 and then pulls out a gun and we end up shooting and killing them. Right. Well, had he had just listened to what we had said, keep your hands out your pocket, sit down on the curb while I'm asking you to quit. You know what I mean? And you put me in that position where I had to react. And now I'm wrong. Right. Yeah. So, he was put in a position where he had to react. I mean, I mean, you, you definitely, it's definitely something you got to consider and what you got to think about. I mean, you know. The, the kid was doing something. It was the shot at the at the owner of the vehicle that caused the shooting part. Mm -hmm, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying it wasn't it wasn't the stolen. That's what people need to understand. It wasn't the stolen vehicle. It was the action of him being shot at first. And if I'm being shot at first, and I'm a citizen with a gun, well, I'm gonna shoot back. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. I'm not going to let you shoot me. I'm going to shoot back. You know what I'm saying? Now, was he, was he, do we know if he was licensed to carry? Now, that I don't know. I don't know if that, I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm assuming that it's not illegal in Denver, Colorado for citizens to, to carry a gun or, or whatever it was. I'm assuming that that was something that they looked at and decided that he was at least legally carrying a firearm. Okay. So assuming so I, well, the reason well, I said because, that would be because you know if his training to see what training he's had uh, on the use of deadly force uh, of when to shoot because you know that could play a factor in it as well uh, that the other party chances are you know based on that we we unless we saw the threat my goal is always to be first on squeezing the trigger. Uh, so if he saw the threat and shot, and then the other person shot, is he still justified? Now, see, that, that's Before a good question. It out. happened so fast. The the shot happened right. so fast, and they seem to right. happen in very close succession. You know, one right, right after the other. Boom, boom. Somehow. 
it makes right. you wonder if he had his, like you said, he had his gun out. Mm -hmm. But it makes you wonder if he was aiming it at that person mm -hmm. or at the driver at the time he ran up to the car. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it just so happens that somebody within the car shot mm -hmm. and he, he was quick to return fire just like that. You know what I'm saying? Now, hey, right. you know, that's that's what it appears possible on the video. Uh now, if, if they couldn't show that there was a shot coming from the car, well, then I think he would be up, up the creek because he chose to shoot a fleeing vehicle as a citizen. That's not a reason to use deadly force mm -hmm. in, in that situation. But because they shot at him first, that was his whole defense. Well, again, I think... I can't, I can't blame it. I, I agree with that part. 12 years old or not, if you shoot at me, I, I I I can't let you kill me. <laughs> Gotta defend myself. Well, I mean, same way as, as law enforcement. Yeah, yeah, I definitely don't want to shoot no twelve year old. But no. I'm not gonna let you. I don't care how old you are. I'm not gonna let you kill me. And I'm not gonna assume how old you are either. You know what I'm saying? No, I can't. All assume. I'm looking at is, is you shooting at me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, it, 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 there's 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 fourteen, fifteen year old boy walking around with full beards. Yep. Uh, yeah. I can't tell you you 14 years old or 12 years old and you already got, you know, facial hair and stuff like that. Mm. Uh, you know, I can't I can't you know, again like I said, you know, he's got tunnel vision. His his tunnel vision is so narrow right now. He's not seeing anything. I can tell you the last thing that dude's thinking about is how old this kid is or or rather not if it was a kid. To to him it was probably just an adult, young adult uh thief still in his vehicle he's just trying to get his his property back yes. so yes. I, that's the way i see it so but all right man that was good 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 show good talk man and we're gonna go ahead and wrap this one up mike put it down in the books yeah good another one another one another one down you know that's so right. folks remember if you, you you make that decision if you choose to get in, involved in something like that keep in mind all the stuff you'll have to deal with and go through and of possibly taking someone's life if you end up getting into a shooting. You know what I'm saying? So that's something you want to think about if you choose, if you that type of person who chooses to carry a gun and and choose to get involved in something like that. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. So go ahead, like, share, and subscribe. Uh, again, if you're new to our channel, uh, uh, hit that notification button every time we go live or do a recording like we're doing tonight. Get that notification. Stay up to date with all our latest video videos. Um, again, leave a comment below on where is your 12 year old if you have a 12 year old, or what would your 12 year old be doing when you hit the 12 year old? <laughs> would he be out or she be out at the wee hours at night uh, doing things they had no business doing, or would they be at home in bed? where they ought to be or playing uh, PlayStation. So leave us a comment below. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? And, and what do you think about this video and whether or not you like this uh, video and the content of this video and like to see more of it? Uh, whatever the case may be, leave a comment down below. Uh, Mike and I will be back next Thursday at a regular time live. We'll be back live. So make sure you tell everybody, tell your friends and family and, and, and join the conversation. Uh, so with that being said, uh, we wish you all well. Uh, be blessed. Stay safe. And we will see y'all next week. Peace. Peace.